I wanted to record a message just to say uh, thank you to everyone uh, watching the channel. It's been a great few months and I've enjoyed creating the content for you. It's definitely helped improve my skills and I also want to extend this thanks to the gardeners themselves who have done an amazing job in Gibbs Garden as you can see here and for giving me this opportunity. Um, it was always going to come to an end really. We've got exams coming up next week and this is the last day we're allowed to film here. Um, and as of this video, um, the Gardening Club will not be uploading any more videos. Um, so I'll leave it up as an archive to see. Welcome Alamal to the Gardening Story Part 3. Now yes, I know, the Gardening Club hasn't been around for like over a year at this point. I know. I know, but I thought that it'd be nice to catch up with the gardeners, find out what they've been doing since they left Westcliff, and to, you know, get their views on the club while they were still there, you know, reflect on the past and, you know, reminisce on old memories. Um, I'm gonna let the content speak for itself because I've filmed this bit so many times I've no idea how to introduce this video. But first, I wanted to show the garden in its current form. Um, and find out what's been happening to it since we've been away. So, unfortunately, none of us are in Southend anymore. So, let's hear from Scott Kebble, who is. Kind of a hit and miss, but we've got stuff growing. We've got the beds still here. It's bloody cold. we got some park tunnel there. you got some vines which are meant to be growing there, and that's fallen over, which is a bit of a shame. And, yeah, things are growing. I'm on the path currently that goes to the shed. All very good. It got benches over there that were built, but they weren't enforced, so they died. Got some quality beds over here. I'm not sure what they were growing at the time, but it looks like high quality soil. And the, and the beds themselves have kept up with the weather and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's pretty good. The mulching thing seems to have disappeared, which is quite interesting. So if we look over here, it's got the pallets and the stuff and the stuff over there. So, I mean, it's a mixed bag. Over here we've got some planned stuff, like some stuff on the ground over there. But what has happened though, in spite of the fact that it does look a bit look a bit dishevelled at the moment, is that the headmaster has allowed the guys to plant up there. So there are some trees growing up there. So gardening club is expanding. I mean at the moment it's a bit it's a bit here and miss because it's that time of year, but hopefully next year, this summer, there'll be another resurgence like there was last year, because it's it's doing really well. Year thirteen's the old year 12s took over and there were like a load of people under the leader of decks it was uh, very good going into the shed now oh i am not going into the shed now right here we have like the m what's left of them i assume is the mulching thing it's just a bit yeah that was that was the construction thing but there are a lot of stuff here there is a lot of stuff here so if we look at the side of the shed this is obviously what they're working on some kind of drainage system for the shed to get some water in a water butt with some material so it is it is well well resourced but um yeah that is gardening club in the snow and the rain that we are experiencing at the moment but um yeah as i say yeah Thank you, Scott, for giving us an update on what the garden looks like. Now, we're going to hear from some of the previous gardeners and what they've gotten up to in the last year. Now, we had to adapt the format this time around, so instead of the studio we used to have, we set up remote interviews. So, let's meet our main characters. Well, there's a lot to go over. I'm a big boy, and being a big boy comes with its downsides, let me tell you. I have to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, work's going well. I it's it's really maturing seeing um, like how you you can become invested in a team and work together and see yourself fitting in. And then of course at the end of the day, taking money home. <laughs> That's uh, really what it's all about: saving money, putting setting up a nest egg. I'm gonna live in the woods one day, one day soon. Hello, uh, I'm Harry. Uh, I'm studying biology at Peterhouse, Cambridge, and uh, having having a good time doing it. You know. Uh, other than that, I do like I play football for the college. 
I play a lot of pool, I'm in the Mushroom Society and I do a few other things. Uh, a bit of fiending here and there, you know. Can I just ask what the hell a Mushroom Society is? Uh, I'm in the University Mycological Society, which we go on and we go on mushroom hunts and shit, it's great. But I am also part of the um, College Gardening Society, I should add. That's probably more relevant. We have a big garden, luckily. Oh yeah, bigger than the Westcliff one. And yet. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm Sam, uh, and I do astrophysics at York Uni. I'm Bella. I'm uh, one of the token women that were at a gardening club. I'm at Leeds now, uh, doing natural sciences. Um, since I've come here, I've realised that I hate chemistry and that I never want to do it again. And the main thing I've done is I joined Jiu Jitsu Society, and yeah, we are the current current champions of uh, the UK. So you know, better watch out. Um, yeah, I haven't really done much else, but I've been really enjoying my time at the UK. Hi, my name is Aaron Wells. Um, I'm a former member of Gardening Club, and since leaving Gardening Club, I've done absolutely nothing. I've played through Persona 5 three times, I've played through its sequel once, and I have played Lego Harry Potter too many times. Other than that, I've technically been at university, but I haven't been since the 15th of January, and today is the 15th of March. Oh, I'm, when am I not ready to talk about Gardening Club? I'm currently studying computer science at the University of Exeter. I'm in my first year at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. Are we started from the very start, like, oh, my name's Ethan NG. I'm a first year at LSE and I study history. Are we doing that? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> my name is Anj Singh. I am working as a GPA or general practice assistant and I'm applying for medicine. I would say that every moment was a highlight, to be perfectly honest. Um, every Wednesday, I was very much looking forward to going to the gardening club. Um, if I had to pick one moment, it would be when I was the only heavy lifter on duty because everyone else ran away because they're too weak. Uh, and I had to wheel a, what was it, 90 kg pallet? I want to say that, around that, across the field to the gardening club. Um, on nothing more than my passion for gardening, uh, which was more than enough to get it through. Also, a little bit of Dave's help, of course, but apart from that, sheer will. <laughs> I think, well, in, in a really soppy sort of way, the best thing about Gardening Club was just getting everyone together and having a good time, sort of every lunchtime, every Wednesday afternoon, and just sort of having everyone come together and do something, work on something, even if it was something completely unproductive, like tilling the the beds. Um, it, it was fun just to get all together. And especially with the documentary, I think that it, it brought everyone together so well. And it really gave us all, I want to say a sense of purpose. It might not have been a proper purpose, but it was something we could work on and that we could be proud of. And I think that we really succeeded at that. Some of my some of my favourite memories. I I mean, I actually um had the uh, enviable opportunity to work a lot on Gardening Club Beyond uh, Six Form because I went back to work at the school afterwards, didn't I? And um, that meant, especially over the summer, I was able to work a lot on in my in my sort of free time and my time off. I was able to work a lot on building a few more things, building a bench, some raised beds getting some um, more seeds in the ground and growing a lot of radishes, which was fun. Uh, I liked eating my first gardening club radish, you know. I do remember the path. And I remember getting a lot of hate for my path. And it's still, that, that has stuck with me since. That's the main thing about gardening club. And I remember the shed. I don't know if anything actually grew, but it was there. But I, the, the main thing I remember is spending a lot of time placing rocks in the ground to make a path. And for some reason, I enjoyed that. Um, but then again, I was probably insane in that point in my life. I, I was at West of High School for Boys. So. Well, I sort of enjoyed like being around the shed. I really enjoyed like that and seeing it like being constructed. Uh, 
I mean, I, I, I quite enjoyed digging. It was, it was just nice to, instead of doing school work, to just sit there and hold a shovel, I guess, for, for an hour, yeah. Well, my number one favourite part of Gardening Club was using it as an excuse to go home early. But following that, I think the shed was an absolutely brilliant place to hang out before we were unjustly banned from going in there. Um, I think watching people try and mainly fail to build a path was incredibly funny. Um, the rest of it, uh, hit or miss. I liked my role where I didn't have to do anything and just sort of got to sit and occasionally boss people around. They never listened, but it's the sense of authority, not the actual authority. Probably building the raised beds, that was pretty fun. I also liked all the, like, posing for all the photos and stuff. That was, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I only broke a couple of drill bits, so... If I'm going to be completely honest, it was just the leisurely act of chilling out with Cody and Bella and some of my closer friends like you. But I mean, I also did enjoy parts of the gardening. I mean, I had a genuine enthusiasm for making that path, making all that clear that I did, until I realised that like, oh wait, this isn't meant to be a serious club. <laughs> so I also kind of gave up after a while. Also, after somebody chucked that note in my clay, I actually got pissed off by that. I actually got pissed. As you can see, we had a lot of interest from a bunch of the gardeners for, for a reunion episode. So a massive thank you to all of them again. Now, that's for my favorite moments. Of course, I got out of all the manual labor work doing this side, the production side, and really honing in on my photography and videography skills. So that was always really fun to me. I'm gonna be honest, it was never the most, you know, productive use of our time at school but for a while it was it was fun you know we may not have got any like proper tangible products in my view i think that our first year starting up the club was really important for getting all the infrastructure done the shed the beds the uh, compost bins for us and future generations to do some gardening but that's my take on it but what do the other gardeners think i can't say that what actually happened was anything like what I could have expected. Um, I had no idea that paths took so long to make, God. Uh, <laughs> but I, I can't say I'm disappointed at all. It was great. It really was. So looking back on it, is there anything that you would have, if you, that you would have changed? Yeah, I, I think if I could take my current self with all my wisdom that comes with age and send him back, you know, 18 months uh, with all the knowledge that I have now, everything that I've learned, We'd, we'd have had much more success because I, I did not know what I was doing uh, <laughs> and yeah just being more clear about what needs to be done. I think the only thing that could have been done differently is we should have started it earlier. Um, I think just doing it all through the winter was just quite it was quite cold. I feel like it would have been nicer if we had started a bit earlier you know getting down but it would have been nicer just do it a bit longer I think uh, you know perhaps to get some more stuff actually growing. I think for the time that we had, we were fairly productive. A lot more was done than I expected initially. Because initially, initially I just didn't think it would be something that would work. Um, but then we got the shed and we got the tools and got the funding, which I, I honestly, I never would have expected. But I think we got lucky because the headmaster liked gardening so much, I guess. It wasn't going to be like a sustainable thing, I don't think, or it wouldn't be as active as it was. So although I thought it was good for the year, I mean, it didn't, there wasn't really much legacy, I guess, left behind. I would, I would imagine it turned out how I expected. I would imagine. Everyone had a good time, which is the most important thing. I think we got quite a lot done in a way, in some ways. In other ways, we got very little done, but in the best possible way, you know, in a, in a fun and interesting way, I think. I don't think the final product um, has currently lived up to anybody's imagination of it. Um, not to mince my words, Gardening Club was a complete fucking failure. I, it, <laughs> completely and utterly and granted it was never meant to be a success it was effectively an excuse to slack off every Wednesday afternoon and on that purpose it succeeded as far as I'm aware nothing has actually happened since we left which makes complete sense so I'm not surprised that nothing's happening with it. It's a complete failure, and to be honest, I'm quite happy about it. Because it's very funny, and I do not like Westcliff. One thing I wish we did more of was, we, if, was like planting more crops. I wish we did more of that. I think we still did a decent amount. Like, we got the shed, we got 
all those raised beds. We got the compost bins. So yeah, we Some did. Some people refer to it as an absolute failure. Do you agree with that statement? I don't. I think it was fun. And yeah, we could have done a bit more, but I think if we had planned it, like more time to plan during like the colder seasons, then it would have been a lot better. More time. Honestly, that's what I would change. If I had to change one thing, it would be we would have more time allocated to us per week so we could get more done because when we left, a lot of things were unfinished. I think live up is the wrong way to put it because, I mean, how it came out was very interesting. It was actually very enjoyable. Um, but it did differ from how I imagined it come out. I think the first part is I wasn't expecting so much manual labor in regard to making everything i wasn't quite prepared for the extent to which we actually had to like completely start from scratch but i mean it, it, was, it was still fun doing all of it it's just like you know i'd have thought there'd be a lot more gardening given that it was gardening club we might as well have called it construction club for, honestly and that's the gardening club in 2023 can you um can you just give us your opinion on that I i'm conflicted inside on the one hand everything looks great but on the other the mulching, what's happened to it? The whole, the compost bin's being gone. That was one of my, one of my first jobs when I, when I got the job at uh, Westcliff. They, they asked me to remove the compost bin because there had been complaints about it being like a biohazard, basically. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see, it's interesting to see that it's looking, it's looking good. I'm glad that front year 13s are at doing such a good job. In all seriousness, no, it's it's looking great. I'm I'm really pleased to see that the the engineering team's work is held up this year, and it's really great to see that they've got stuff, some stuff already growing. And you know, hopefully, you know, not in March. You know, hopefully, a few months down the line, it will look a lot less drab than that when we actually get some well, when they actually get some plants growing. So you should say. I think it's really good. I wasn't sure how it would carry on after basically the entirety of um, our well, our year left because there weren't many year 12s there beforehand. But it looks like it's it looks like it's doing really well, and I think that's you know it's a good thing. You know, we might you know there's like a plaque. There was a plaque in um, Westcliff where it talks about the gardening club. I think one day. We get our own plaque maybe in a hundred years from now or whatever however long it takes you to get plaque but just saying I, I think that's i think it's doing really well it looks like they've done about the same amount as we would which i think is i think it's a slow progress club which means eventually in a projection of about 10 years it will be really nice there well it brings me unparalleled joy to see that the gardening club has expanded its borders it's even better to see uh groundwork laid for more construction projects now it was a bit of a bummer to see the benches destroyed by the elements but uh good effort nonetheless lads it was amazing to see that the beds are still up and they're still gr they're still growing uh so it is amazing to see that our legacy has continued on thinking about gardening club and the impact that it's had on you what have you taken from garden club has anything that you learned doing it come with you in later life yeah so gardening club has been a, a huge learning experience for me i i think there, there are a few key takeaways the first is that as much as you can let people do their own thing people don't much like being told what to do and they have a much better idea of what they should be doing than you do if you're the manager. Maybe I'd I'd, I'd learn to like be a bit more creative. I know the path wasn't that creative, but I never really tend to just sort of do things with my, you know, like physically. I just don't really, never really did something like that. And I think getting involved, you know, putting in a bit of work. I'm not really a person who likes to put in work, especially physical work. Um, and I think it just taught me that I can do these things if I want to. Well, I definitely learned some stuff about gardening. I'm not sure how useful that will be in life. I, I don't know what, what I'm going to do with it, but I mean, maybe, maybe in the future it will be useful. I think, I mean, for me, I just kind of enjoyed, just enjoyed the fact that we had, like, we had a plot of land, you know, uh, we sort of like do what we want with to, to a degree. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't say really I 
learn that much from it. I'm sure there's something. If there is like, something. I'll, you know, uh, I took all the memories and all the fun times with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the real gardening was the friends we made along the way. I mean, I've spoken about it to people. Yeah. They, they actually think it's pretty cool. I just mentioned all the actually productive stuff we did, which was for a very short period of time. But there was a time where we were like, you know, our marginal revenue product was not bad. I, I think that's completely wrong. Well, it certainly taught me to choose my friends differently. Uh, other than that, I think Gardening Club has probably taught me to um, stay away from gardening. Uh, stay away from people who say they can garden. Um, and most certainly to never, ever allow Bella Pickup to build a fucking path. Do you feel like you've taken anything away from Gardening Club with you in your um, later life to uni with you and to your... Gnomes. Multiple gnomes. No, I... Disclaimer. This, is, this, is, this was a joke. I did not take any gnomes. I took zero gnomes. I took one though, maybe two. I, I think I've taken a lot from it, you know. I think I've taken a lot of um, knowledge, a lot of experiences that I'm going to apply to the rest of my life. A lot of funny stories to tell to tell friends in the future and to reminisce about with people who were there. The biggest thing that I and a lot of other people have taken from Gardening Club is the relationships that were made there, you know. Bloom into beautiful flowers, you know. Gardening pun. Lol. I have the perfect thing for that because during my interview for Anglo Ruskin, um, there was a leadership task um, in which I had to describe to the person on the other side of the table what I'm looking at and they had a cutout and I had to get them to put in the right order so they could see what I'm seeing. I hearkened back to getting everyone to shovel the mulch into the mulcher from uh, just the ground and I remember I was the one picking out people to do that and I just took that experience changed it a bit and got my offer now I want to talk a little bit about the production side of gardening club of course I got out of all the manual labor through doing this the content creation I produced several videos and I took photos every week of our gardening activities and documenting the changes over time of our plot of land this really helped me to build my photography skills and my videography skills and you can see a clear improvement in the quality from part one to part two and now hopefully in part three. This is partly due to the upgrade in camera equipment but mainly due to the experience that I gained through doing this. The basic setup was we had our subject sat in the chair, a basic two light setup and James had a microphone to capture the sound. We basically picked any room that we could find, the bulk of which were done in the theatre, but we had to get creative using one of the science rooms and what, the balcony of the Great Hall at one point. Needless to say, I had a lot of fun with the production of these, and the response from my peers was overwhelmingly positive, although it never really blew up with the YouTube algorithm. It was never meant to, and I'm not entirely sure what I would have done if it did, but we did manage to get some outreach. We had a couple of viewers from the United States, Germany, and one of our shorts even got a lot of views from Turkey. I'm not entirely sure why, it was just Jack screaming mustard plants. But like I say, it was never about becoming internet famous, it was about testing my own skills as a filmmaker and creating something now, let's hear from for James our friend Clark, to enjoy. Who me with the production of the two huh? major episodes. Now, unfortunately, he wasn't able to help me make this part of the documentary, but we were able to talk to him and find out what he thought of the production process. So I did pretty much nothing with Gardening Club because I was um, I was working with the um, the German department trying to make people think language is irrelevant, which was very difficult in itself. So I ended up doing um, kind of helping out with the production. So obviously, um, we met. Well, not we met, but we um, we kind of made a friendship over helping out with tech. Uh, and I had, well, I pretended for about seven years to understand it. And that meant that I was running tech at that point. Uh, and obviously you came in to help out with our, uh, our drama productions. So I ended up getting involved through that because I had some equipment and I knew the people and um, I wanted to do something that wasn't revising. So yeah, it all, all, kind, of, all kind of came together through that. It was good fun. 
you know, we'd be pulling people out, um, chatting to them. We set up some pretty cool in- interview spots. So we took the um, the Westcliff Theatre, which luckily no one came in on, and um, then the balcony as well. I remember having some real difficulty trying to set the balcony up with lighting. I think my, my personal highlight would have to be setting up in uh, the theatre and then having a good 15 minute long interview about Weatherspoons. I think these documentaries sort of have become Ardening Club's main legacy, at least at least for, for our year group. The documentaries really served to really bring everyone together and create this sort of gardening club like spirituality i guess and seeing that people outside of our sort of narrow gardening club community enjoy it too getting people's like family involved um sitting down and watching it i think that's really great so no I, I just think they were a good memory of the club i think they did a good job of documenting um sort of the personalities of people in the club and their dynamics with each other and I thought, I thought it's just a really nice way to remember what we did um, all together back in year thirteen. It's a, it's a good memory, and um, I think without those videos, we'd all forget and you know, get hung up on our because we had a lot of arguments and stuff. I think we'd get hung up on that, but you know, it's a reminder that everything was once you know, good, and that we did all have fun together. Uh, I'll tell you, it was the most fun part of Gardening Club. I think. Uh, spe- especially the interviews, like my mum watched this, and she thought that she 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 understood what gardening club was, and she understood that nobody actually gave a fuck about gardening. But she did manage to enjoy um, the two documentary. Was it two documentaries we got out before gardening club ended? Uh, there was somehow a plot line developing through the end of the. Uh, of the stories that was certainly fun to imagine some sort of horrific conspiracy and i'm terribly upset that we'll never actually get to find out what the conclusion to that thrilling tale was but at the same time these documentaries in that they've completely failed in their original purpose so fitting with the spirit of gardening club and i find that so fucking funny yeah, absolutely. It was always fun to like see, uh, obviously the two documentaries that we did, and then like the couple of days after the Wednesday afternoons, we get all the pictures released on the Instagram. And that was always fun to like flick through, and obviously they were all very well produced, well done, Will. How would you rate them if you were a film Ten. critic? You know what, nine and a half because we didn't manage to get Miss Gellard in. Our time together is almost coming to an end, and for good this time. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as much as I have. I often find myself coming back to these videos whenever I'm drunk or homesick, often at the same time. It becomes a time capsule, a record of history that Westcliffians of generations can come back to and look at and be proud of. I'd like to thank all of our amazing gardeners once again for chatting with me. Let's hear from them one more time. Any final remarks? Anything to say to the audience before we go? Thank you for having me. I, I've had a great time with everyone and I hope other people have the same experience going forward. Everyone who was at Gardening Club, I hope they're all doing well now. And um, yeah, it was nice to be a part of something, something a bit more interesting than whatever we were doing at school. And uh, follow LUU Jiu Jitsu on Instagram. Oh, oh. Um, don't do drugs, kids. Life is like a garden. Blumen. There you go. To those watching who are curious about Gardening Club or who just stumbled upon this video um, because you were six hours deep into a what can I find on my recommended um there's a few words I have to say please don't ever try and start a gardening club whether you're 85 years old and trying to get involved in your local activities or you're a secondary school student who thinks it would be a great way to slack off don't for the love of god don't And the second thing I have to say is subscribe to Trickwood on YouTube 
Uh, he's a much better YouTuber than just about anyone you've ever seen. If you don't have a gardening club where you are, start one. We did. We did it great. It's your turn. Edit that out. We do not need to talk about- I had a fun time at Gardening Club. You know, it was really good to like, put something together in the school and hopefully it can continue for a long time coming. Uh, happy gardening everyone. That's all for the final edition of The Gardening Story. I want to thank everyone again for taking the time to watch this and for making it possible in the first place. This for real is the final video this time. It's always hard to say goodbye, but it's time to move on to new things, new journeys, new adventures. I'm once again going to plug my own YouTube channel uh, and I have other projects that I want to work on over the coming months. So now it's time for a proper goodbye. Thanks again to everyone involved, everyone for watching and happy gardening. Thank mm -hmm. you.